Welcome to this week's edition of Trade the Trend. I'm Jason McIntosh. It is Friday the 12th of November 2021. Trade the Trends, a weekly video discussing the latest trends and opportunities in the markets. As always, this is general commentary and doesn't take your personal situation into account. Alrighty, with that said, let's jump to the first chart. S&P 500. Well, look, interesting week. This has been the sort of sort of pullback that I was talking about pretty much this time last week. When we were around here, I thought we may see some consolidation kick in. Just to check this advance that we've had from uh, from the lows a, a few weeks ago, but look, it's taken an extra week for this to this consolidation to start, but it's all very much, very much what you'd expect from a from a you know, from a from a rising market. You've got to have these pauses and consolidations along the way. So let's draw some Fibonacci levels in to get some ideas of what what could happen from here. So I'm using this as a starting point. So this was the low, we had a rally, we had a pullback. And so I'm doing drawing the fibs from the low of the pullback for this latest leg of the advance. So even if this market pulled back just to the 38.2% fib retracement, which would be quite a, you know, a natural sort of uh, look pullback within a, within, a, within a structurally strong market, that is still a couple of percent below the market. So I think there's every chance that over the next next few sessions, maybe we do see a little bit more weakness. We could end up seeing something. Again, this is always guesswork when I draw these lines on the chart. You know, maybe we see maybe we see a bit of um, a bit of a pullback down to here, and then from there, maybe that could be the, the springboard for for a new high. It's look, no one knows. It's always guesswork when you do that, but that would be that would fit into a, a bullish scenario quite, quite nicely. It's uh, look. I think um, I think the thing to say is here. There's no outwardly obvious sign that there's a there's a, a large or a significant top forming. At some point, we're going to see this market come back and have a have a, you know, a quite a. You know, Look, a very decent correction, like fifteen to twenty percent, sort of, sort of, um, sort of depth to it. But that there's no sign of that happening at the moment. It's uh, so I think at the moment the you know the the base case with this is to say, look, the the trend is up, and it's to give that trend the the benefit of the doubt until we get some sign that something else is is going on, and uh, and we will get it that that at some point we haven't had that bigger. Yeah, 10, 15, 20% correction for for quite a while now. But for now, it's a case of staying with that bullish trend. And uh, and look, my process throughout this this whole rise, you know, through the you know the whole market market rise has been to use a wide trailing stop. That's my process. It's not about trying to get out when you get a 5% or a 10% pullback, but giving the market plenty of room to move to try and stay on these big trends. Like you know, these big trends for as long as possible. There's no reason that someone couldn't capture this entire move with the right sort of trailing stop. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you a quick example of what I'm talking about. This is a this is a stock from my own portfolio. It's um, a company called Lark Dis Distilling, and this red line below the market. This is my trailing stop. You can see I'm giving it a lot of room to move. Now just this. So quickly go back. This is where I got my entry signal. Got my entry signal back here. This was in July 2020. So you know, a few months after the COVID lows. And like just, just follow my exit stop with your eye as uh, as we just scroll scroll through this. You can see you know, the stock obviously moves moves around on its way up. It's not one way traffic. And then you, know, you get these these periods like like this. Now on this chart that doesn't look like a big deal, but let me tell you that's a 23% fall and it happened over the space of about two or three weeks. So put yourself in that, that position, one of the stocks in your portfolio now, which had been doing quite well, which had rallied, which had almost almost um, doubled in price, then loses 23% in three weeks. What do you do? Well, I'll tell you what a lot of people do, they sell. They say, well, that's it, it's all over, I'm, I'm getting out. That's if they hadn't sold through any of the, these small pullbacks along the along the way up, and uh, but look, that's often a mistake because then you see what happens next. It just the trend continues up, and uh, here this is another this is another um, twenty or so percent correction. 
which you know, they're, they're hard. They're emotionally hard a lot of the time to sit through if you don't have a process, if you don't have a plan. So my plan is a calculated trailing stop. If you're interested, it's, a, it's an ATR-based stop. ATR stands for, for average true range. And uh, it's basically the average trading range. And you use a multiple of that, that creates a trailing stop. And that's how I stay on these big trends. That's very much how I think someone could stay on Stay on you know, these advances we're having in the equity markets at the moment. All right, okay, so let's jump back to our, our charts. And so look, let's go to briefly just want to touch back on the Russell 2000, so the US small cap index, because that, uh, that was the most interesting breakout from the week before. And we've seen that. So this is, um, look, as you can see, big trading range, nine months in nine months in the making this range so very significant and it followed like that big run up so this now becomes you know a really great launching pad for a potential new rally and so far so far so good only early days though of course but um look i think um what we've seen this week is very um very constructive so we've had the had the uh the the breakout having a pullback a bit of a return move that would be called so really important now, just see how we how things trade with this uh, the top of the, the, the range. Want to see the market stay above here. If you know, it comes back within the range, well then it starts well, starts becoming a false break and that's not what we want to see happen. But that's not the base case. The base case is that we would see some maybe some more consolidation above the above the, the breakout point. And then from there, then maybe we see the, the next leg higher. That's the sort of sort of thing I'd be looking for to see how this. That's how I think this could develop over the next next few months. But look, let's um, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see what the market does. And look, and by the way, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Let YouTube know that you're getting value from the video. Then YouTube will show other people. And if other people are watching them, and people are watching in general, well, then I keep making them. So please hit the like button. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button with the bell notification, that really helps too. So please do that. Okay, so over to the um, the Aussie market, and look, the, um, the 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 Aussie stocks are really still struggling around this um, resistance band, which we have, you know, roundabouts through through there, around that um, look, it's around the the seven thousand eight hundred sort of sort of mark. It's been butting its head up against there for you know, good look a good two weeks now. Um, look, it's going to be going to be interesting how this plays out. If the U.S. market does continue to pause, well, then maybe we are going to see the see the uh, the local stocks pull back a bit before potentially like punching through. But ultimately, I do think the market is going to come up and get above here and make a new high. It's just a matter of whether it's going to take this sort of path, a little bit more consolidation, and then up. Or look, potentially does punch straight through. Some of those iron ore miners are looking so overstretched on the downside that you know, if they had a had a rebound, that could be enough to give the market a bit of a bit of a momentum push. But look, we just got to just got to wait and see. But you know, if you're not a day trader and you're using wide trailing stops for your your portfolio, it doesn't really matter whether this market. Uh, you know, pops higher next week or next month. It's all about trying to stay with this this overall uptrend until we get some sort of evidence that the the trend is over. And at this point, there's there's no evidence of that. So it's um, use those wide stops to you know, see off bouts of volatility like this and sit through sit through you know pauses in the trend while we wait for the market to show us whether it is in fact going to you know, take another leg up. Okay, so I'm going to finish up today with a couple of commodities, a couple of interesting commodities from the week. So let's just find them. Gold. So gold is gold's had a breakout, breakout to the top side. So I drew these these lines on the chart a few weeks ago, maybe about four weeks ago when I was talking about gold, and it is um, look, it's been a this has been a big consolidation really since the, the highs back in August last year. We had the downward phase and then we've, now we've been having the sideways phase. Now we've got the breakout. So it's going to be interesting to, 
to watch this to see whether this move does stick and whether we actually are on the way up for a significant new move. I think, look, I'm very bullish longer, medium to longer term. I think it's just a matter of time before we get a move up towards, look, up towards 2,400 and beyond potentially. Uh, look, whether this is a breakout or not, I don't know, but I think we've got to work on the basis that, that it is. Give it the benefit of the doubt, we've got an upward break. So I think that's that's positive for, for gold. So now it's a case of like, you know, I go and I look at the gold stocks and go, look, where do we, where are the opportunities? And uh, look, I've got to say, I, the opportunities aren't standing out just at the moment. And the reason for that, look, I just quickly go through a couple of them. Let me put on the moving averages for this. So uh, evolution mining, moving averages, they haven't turned higher. It looked like they're starting to turn, but they haven't turned yet. Look, I, I don't like to preempt a turnaround because sometimes a turnaround doesn't doesn't happen. You can get um, get uh, stocks which look like they're they're going higher and then they you know, then they just just you know, fall and resume their downtrend. So I'm I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait before I add to any of my my gold holdings. Uh, then I look at a stock like North Star. Moving averages are again turning higher. We had this support band through through here, so that's encouraging. But look, it's possible that these do some work. I'm not. I'm not expecting these markets, these stocks, to you know, to do that. That's you know, that is very unlikely. That rarely happens. It's more a case that we're going to see see some backing and filling. You know, we've got some initial up, upside. Then maybe it comes down. It you know does this for a bit. Then starts to then starts to work its way higher. You'd expect more something like that to develop, and that gives you time to get in. Gives the moving averages time to cross, and look, you know, maybe just, you know, just, you know, maybe it's uh, this level here today's level. Maybe this level's trading in a couple of months' time as it does start to break up, and it, it's um, it then looks the the look of the chart is a whole lot more sustainable to me, and I'm more confident when the moving average is going the right direction. So for me, today's not the day for the gold stocks, but look, it's looking interesting. And you look at a big U.S. stock like um, like Newmont. Newmont's looking looking really encouraging. Big support base that it's broken, that it's um, that it's bounced up off. Moving average to the game. Look, they just haven't haven't crossed as yet. So I'm waiting and watching, uh, but I'm positive. I'm watching with a positive outlook to uh, hopefully getting some more more gold exposure over the, the coming weeks. And just the last commodity quickly look at is because um, it's also significant. So what how this has played out this week. So where are we in my commodities? Silver. Silver. So look, this is um I drew this up last week, this big trading range. Silver's been in since uh, August last year, so just over a year. And I drew this pattern in last week. This is a last week it was a potential pattern because we hadn't um, we hadn't broken above what was the, the hypothetical you know, neckline which I've drawn through here. You know, we think we're down here somewhere. So look, we had a potential making sort of an inverse head and shoulders pattern. This is called, so you've got the two shoulders either side and you've got the head. This blue line is called the neckline. So the, the theory with these patterns are that the sellers fail to continue the downward momentum through here, fall short of making a new low, and then reverses course and breaks above these um, these previous high points, which form this neckline, which is where we are now. So theoretically, how this would play out is it could maybe it goes a touch higher, then maybe we get a return move, we get a bit of bit of chop, another move higher, and then we start to make our way up towards the the top of the range. Who knows whether it plays out like that, but it could. That's a sort of possibility. And that's what this is all about. It's looking for possibilities. That's what how we could see silver start to develop. And it fits in with the scenario which we're looking at in gold. So with um, with silver, I want to um, I'll give you a little bit more, more of a, a bigger picture view. Let's go to the, the weekly chart and just have a quick look how that shapes up. And it's really interesting looking at looking at silver like this because it's got that classic boom bust profile. Had you know the, the you know the, the giant boom here through the um, you know, just uh, well, peaked in 2011, and then you had the bust, 
and then you've got the you know multi-year you know, traverse through purgatory as you um, wait for the new uptrend to develop. That's often how these scenarios play out, and uh, and and you see these these do reasonably regularly appear in markets. I'll just give you a quick couple of examples. So look, the um, Nasdaq is a is a is a great example from. Back, um, back in the dot-com days, you had the boom and then you had the bust. Different type of um, rebound. It um, you know, started then struggled to you know, start to gain momentum, fell again, and it was you know, it took took a while, but then eventually it really got, got going. Another example is, um, is, uh, is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a great example of this. Let's just expand this out a bit. Get in the right area. This is the one I'm after because there's been been a few of these in Bitcoin. It's had a few boom busts, but look, you can see the same profile here: boom bust. You know, you traverse through purgatory and then up it goes. So look, I don't know whether silver's going to exactly follow follow either of those those scripts, but it's got that potential. It's got the potential over the next the next um, I don't know the next next um, year or two maybe to start to make its way back up to to a new all-time high gonna be very interesting to watch so how do you play it how do you play silver well one of the look, plenty of individual stocks I'll save them for another day but just a, a couple of like ETF options ETFs are often a, a convenient way to play a, a big move like this because you don't have to worry about getting the individual stock right you just got to get the overall move right which is hard enough on its own so there's a, um, a silver mining ETF in the US uh, Global X silver miners ticker code is SIL so look it's an interesting uh, it's got a similar profile to silver in that we've had the uh, we've had the, the rally we've got this sideways consolidation Sideways to downward sloping consolidation, potentially we get a we get a kick up over. This is like going to play out potentially over months, not not days or weeks. So I don't think there's a, a rush to go out and and uh, and consider this you know, tonight, you know, or, you know, next week or whatever. Because then when I look at it on the daily chart, that was a weekly a moment ago. Just jumping back to the daily, moving averages haven't crossed. So look, maybe the timing's not quite there yet, but look, could be getting close, because then you look, you can also say there's a, you know, it's got that classic ABC corrective look to it. And look, that does, it is a sort of pattern which does support you know, potentially much higher prices. So look, some interesting things to look at and think about. And uh, so look, let's call that a wrap for this week. Please give me a like if you got some value out of the video. And uh, yeah, look, I will come back next week. We'll try and put it all together again. Thanks for joining in. Look forward to seeing you next week.